Hi everybody. I imagine I'm seeing you right now and that makes me very happy. We're going to do a still life today. Um, I've got a pitcher, an apple, a cup, and a plate. You can put your put your compu computer on pause and go find those things or if you want to just watch and then go back later and and get some objects and set yourself up a still life. The artist is Giorgio Morandi. Giorgio Morandi. He was born in Italy in 1890. He lived until 1964. He was the oldest of five kids. I always like to tell you a little bit about an artist because that's how we learn, oh, kind of where they came from and, and why they paint the way they do. So the oldest of five children, I would think he probably had a lot of responsibility. Um, he loved to paint from a very young age. He went to Paris when he was 24 and he went to art school. Um, he painted still lifes. He said he never painted anything that he didn't see with his eyes. Remember a still life is still, there's a little butterfly sitting on here flapping his wings. It wouldn't be a still life anymore. So we've got our objects. Notice I've got them all layered in front. Here's an example of one of his. Amazing artist. Amazing artist. So he used kind of blocks of color. You can really see it in the back. Um, muted, muted color. So there's nothing bright, bright in this picture. They're very, very quiet, quiet paintings and he chose things um, because of their shapes. And notice they're all a little different. Keep an eye, look at these shadows. He's got his shadows. Which way do you think the light was coming from? Was it coming from this angle or this angle? Or from the top? Think about it for a moment. If the light was coming from the top, you'd see the shadows down here underneath. If it was coming from this side, you see them over here, which leads me to think the light was coming in from this side, so then the shadows are being cast. Remember, anytime we have a shadow, we have to show the light, so we're going to want to make sure ever so slightly this side is darker, isn't it? That side's darker. Here we go. So I've already started mine. Um, I've got, oh, this one has an eraser, but remember there are no mistakes in art. Look at your picture, look at your still life. Look around the edges of everything you've got. Maybe you've got a soccer ball or a baseball. Maybe you have, um, oh, some kind of a, well, a cup is a good thing. You might wanna look in the kitchen. There's some good things there. Um, so get, oh, four, what do I have? One, two, three, four, four things I think might be a good place to start. And then I just want you to draw the outline first. Simple line drawing, just simple. You don't need to erase. It doesn't have to be perfect. Just want you to kind of take a minute and really, really look at these objects. Look at the outline. So I've got mine, I started it and then I started shading the back. This is the second take. <laughs> so go ahead, look at it again. Now I'm gonna look again, hmm. So I can see now there's much darker here. So I'm gonna get the pencil, turn it on its side. A dull pencil works better, really sharp ones uh, sometimes break, mechanical pencils definitely break. And again, look at where the shadows are on here, and then you're gonna draw your shadows in. If you imagine that line wasn't there, my still life would be flying through the air. So make sure you put that line. We've done this before. You guys remember all this. Oop, I lost a little spot in there. And then look at the objects. This, this apple's got a, two different tones, we've got some light and dark. Just go ahead and play with it. Once you've colored some things in, you can actually blend it with your 
blend it with your finger a little bit. It's amazing what you can do with pencil drawings. The background, I'll show you the picture again, but he kept things so simple. Just, this is like the corner of a room, and he shows us that by using different um, tones. This side is lighter, this side's darker, this side's lighter. If you want really dark, remember cross hatching. It's when we make lines going one way, and then to darken it, we'll make lines going the other, kind of like a tic-tac-toe. You can give that a try too, and then if you blend that, you'll really get some, get some dark color. Um, what else can I say? If you wanted to, if you have crayons or watercolors, I wouldn't use anything too bright because his paintings are quiet, very, very subdued. I'm gonna show you one more time. Um, you know I like quotes, so he, here's what he said. One can travel this world and see nothing. To achieve understanding, it is necessary not to see many things, but look at what you see. Really look at this still life when you're drawing it. Really look at it. Have fun, and I'll see you next time.